We're all taking stock of the market's reaction to the presser last week. And, of course, we know Powell's going to testify in front of the House tomorrow. Does he need to refine anything from last Wednesday's comments? I think that the market reacted to two things last week. One was the commentary, which, as everybody has said, has a little more hawkish than I think people were hoping for. And the second was the May inflation number, which came in at 5 percent, which was the highest we've seen uh, since 2008. I think all of the comments that were made were very much in line with continuing to provide liquidity, continuing, you know, the dot plot showed that we're still not expecting any increases in the rates uh, until 2023. You saw a little bit of movement both in the equity markets and in uh, the, the, the Treasury markets. But I think things are still terribly supportive. You still saw very little movement or volatility truly in the equity markets. Um, you know, we see a 10-year at about 2 percent by the end of the year. The market really has been expecting and pricing that in, which I think is why the volatility stayed so low. But the inflation seesaw that we keep on seeing and that relationship between equities and growth and multiples and inflation and interest rates, it's what keeps on being the focus when we have any sort of uncertainty or commentary that doesn't perfectly satiate or fulfill what the market's looking to hear. Right. Um, commodities last week, I mean, we can go through all of them. Uh, soybeans, worst week in about seven years. Corn, worst week since May. Uh, even Philly Fed delivery times were coming in a little bit. Uh, that led some to believe that maybe bottlenecks are beginning to ease. Uh, do you think that the Fed is welcoming that? Absolutely. I think that, you know, everybody has been pretty clear. And again, the Fed came in and said this right away. They think that the inflation that we've seen is a result of supply constraints that were a result of the pandemic. When I talk to my CEOs, when we talk to our clients, that is what we see as well. We expect inflation to mediate to just under 3 percent by the end of the year. I mean, there were some extremes when you look at lumber, obviously. Um, oil, we see as like a very, um, you know, a market that's in a really good place. You have demand increasing as vaccines go in the arm, as cyclicality takes off. But you also have a very patient and very disciplined OPEC that is very conscious of waiting until they see that demand materialize, until they increase. So while there are certain markets that are under stress or sort of in supply uh, booms. We think that largely we're not talking about a huge commodity super cycle, but what we're talking about is very disrupted supply chains that need the time, both specifically in certain locations and then globally, to get back and running, get their people going, get the labor force going, and get shipping under control. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.